Now, the news for South Mississippi. WLOX News This Week. First, the cyber attacks causing havoc all across America. And the warning from experts that the country is vulnerable to more attacks and more disruptions. Hi, I'm Dave Elliott. Thanks for joining me. We're going to start with that, the vulnerability of our cybersecurity. And joining us to talk about this cybersecurity expert, Matt Malone, with the security firm Vistrata. Matt, thanks for being with us here on the Mississippi Coast. We appreciate it. Let's start with the targets, energy, food, water, transportation, uh, financial services. I mean, that's the heart of American life, business, and our infrastructure. Well, that's, that's the critical infrastructure, and that seems to be what's being targeted. Um, and we're extremely vulnerable to it. I mean, we have been kind of lax on our security procedures for quite a while, and now we're starting to kind of catch up with them. But it's definitely, uh, there's more security problems than there are security people. So you talked about how we've been kind of putting it off. We have sort of been burying our head in the sand and kicking that can down the road. Is it the right. government's responsibility? Is it the private sector? Is it these companies? Uh, should they be responsible for hardening their system? Should it be a combination? How, how should that work? Well, that's the, that's the tricky part is it's hard for government to regulate uh, the industry. And then at the same time, it's hard, hard to uh, go back and forth, right? In 2000, they created a thing called NIST 8171, which was a, a regulation that kind of forced people to do it, but there was no there was no uh, balance to it. So basically, if someone did not comply with it, there was no punishment. Uh, that's the thing that probably needs to change most. They've created a new new standard called CMMC um, that is starting to you know have some penalties. Basically, if you are not showing compliance, you won't win a contract, right? So they're putting a monetary value on it. Um, Companies, unfortunately, security is like insurance. A lot, of, a lot of times you drive around without it, you might be fine. But the moment you get into a car accident, that's a pretty big, pretty big punishment, right? So that's the thing that we have to weigh out. L let's talk about the bad actors in all this. Who's behind it? We're told it is some kind of Russian criminal gang controlled by Vladimir Putin. But, I mean, really, it could be any country... Yeah. terrorists even operating within our own country what are your thoughts on that well i mean the problem is it's a very profitable thing and that's where i think a lot of the the uh, energy secretary talked about you know not to pay these ransoms the fbi's begged not to pay the ransoms um if you pay the ransoms it it definitely makes it a uh, profitable business so um you know when you're talking about 11 million dollars that just happened with uh jbm it, it's or those are those are pretty big numbers, right, for, for a small attack. And these attacks come in through users, through clicking on an email, through, um, you know, going to a, a bad website that maybe downloads uh, an infected file. But it, it's it's worthwhile for these attackers to, to really spend the time, money, energy, and effort to find these people and to go into these systems. Um, and they may spend a year on targeting one, one system, but. You know, a couple people can make $11 million a year just on one system. It's pretty good, pretty good uh, pay. Yeah, we used to hear when it came to hostages, don't pay. And now we have right. these uh, companies paying the ransom to get their systems back. Right, because uh, uh, from the company's perspective, they, they look at it from the cost that it would take to uh, redo their data, right? So they're going to have some backups, and they're going to have to go recreate the data, and they're going to have some loss. So they weigh it out between that and how much the ransom is, and sometimes it's cheaper to pay the ransom. The problem is, is that puts forward uh, their attempts and, and makes them go forward on, on doing just that, just creating more and more and more of these attacks. So if you look at the ransomware from a few years ago to where it is now, a few years ago, the most was a couple hundred thousand dollars. Now they're talking millions. So it's, it's only going to get worse. And in a world of COVID, it has been a breeding ground for ransomware because people are at home working and they, you know, you may send a voicemail. If you've ever seen some of the, the phishing attacks that have happened out there, um, they may look like a voicemail. They may come in as an invoice. Next thing you know, the person clicks on it because they they don't know that their boss didn't send it to them. And then there you go. You're off to the races. Yeah, no, but I'm still, so I, 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 I kind of want to go back to the, the, to the if, it's, if it's a criminal enterprise, Mm -hmm. uh, money. But on the other hand, it could be 
Again, I'm going to throw out the word uh, terrorist. It could be ideological, where the whole goal is to spread fear and chaos. Uh, yeah. it, do you think it's a combination of those two things? I think it could be a combination. I mean, I think that even if it's <laughs> even if it's not a nation state, um, a nation state would be looking at the criminal enterprise and saying, "Well, that's a pretty good way to attack the country." So, I mean, no matter what, it's it's definitely it's a, a severe risk to us. From a, from a national security perspective. Now, one thing I found kind of interesting, and in, uh, I don't know if in every case, but I know in one case, the ransomware was paid in Bitcoin. So right. here we have uh, cryptocurrency, it's 2021, and we have cyber attacks. Is that just a coincidence of the, or is that a product of this digital world we're living in? It's somewhat of a project, uh, product of the digital world. I, I think it's also, the criminal element, it's easier for them to move Bitcoin without going through banks. Um, so that's just a little bit easier of a way to, to do it. But Bitcoin is by all means not, uh, it, it, it's it's not anonymous, right? So the way that the FBI was able to pull and, and grab some of that money back was was through tracing the Bitcoin. Um, but I, I think it's just one of those things that to them, whether they get paid in cash, gold or whatever, they're they're willing to take that money. Now, you're a tactical guy, not a policy guy. So a lot of people are saying, what should the Biden administration do at this point? Uh, do we launch a counterattack? We probably already are, let's face it. <laughs> but I mean, uh, how is this, I mean, is this the Cold War all over again? Uh, mutual d destruction, except in a cyber world rather than a nuclear world? Well, I mean, this goes all the way back into, the, there's a, a great book from the, like, 1980s, late 80s, uh, called Cuckoo's Egg. And in that book, it talked about one of the first cyber attacks that happened on, on the DARPA system, right? So this is not new of what we've been doing. Um, uh, all government agencies are, 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 or nation states are attacking each other to some degree um, through cyber, right? Uh, I think that there, it, there's been a big change and shift. In, in 2000, uh, Obama created a, the uh, executive order that created basically this program to to build cybersecurity under NIST State Article 171, and now in, in uh, Biden just created another uh, executive order that basically forces security regulations and under the CMMC. So I think we're starting to kind of pay attention to it. Um, the FBI has had a lot of outreach on on uh, InfraGuard, which is their their outreach to critical infrastructure, but. I don't think corporations are really putting the effort into it that they need to, because it doesn't it, it hurts their bottom line and it doesn't really doesn't really matter until you hurt their bottom line. You know, I remember I was always uh, uh, fearful of the EMP, electric magnetic pulse, pulse. where a, yeah. a nuclear weapon would be exploded. I don't know how many feet in the air over America would completely knock out everything. Uh, and uh, I mean, do you think this cyber? Uh, technology, these attacks have the capacity to pretty much do that same thing, bring America yes. to its knees? Yeah, I mean, so far we've seen in Florida there was an attack on our water supply. Um, we've seen an attack on our electrical grid. We've seen power, uh, gasoline. We've seen now meat. Um, I mean, there is not much left that you couldn't do and couldn't control. Um, and couldn't lock up. So, I mean, if you're going to fight a war and you have no gasoline, you have no no way to get around, I mean, that's a pretty big problem. So um, I, I think it's definitely America should open their eyes and kind of realize this is a, a pretty severe problem. Um, I think when people went to the gas pumps for the first time and realized there was no gas, uh, that was a, a big wake up call to them. But that was minor in comparison of what it could have been. Because if they didn't want to give the uh, Colonial Pipeline their data back and just locked them up for good for no reason, it would have been months before they got turned back on. All righty. Well, it's scary. Uh, I mean, it's Hollywood in real time. A uh, cybersecurity expert from Vistrata, Matt Malone, thanks for being with us uh, here in South Mississippi. We appreciate it. Thanks for your time.